welcome back to the channel. It's Lauren. Thank you so much for watching. I am so excited to be doing this video because it's a Scent Sunday video and it's been a second. I have missed talking about perfumes with you guys and today I thought I would share with you the 10 newest perfumes in my collection. There are some hits, there are some misses. I feel like it kind of runs the gamut of some newer launches as well as just some things that, you know, happened to pique my interest as I was watching different videos and things like that. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'm excited to be having these videos back every single week. I have quite a few planned. Like I have, I don't know, at least three or four um, <laughs> already planned out. So yeah, I, I almost wish there were more Sundays in the week, really. But um, let's just get into it and talk about all these perfumes. I'm gonna start off with the perfume that Twisted Lily sent me this month. This is the Peony Pop, and this is from Hermetica. This was actually, I believe, a Blue Mercury exclusive for a while, but now uh, Twisted Lily has it. So that's why they sent it out to me. Hermetica is pretty cool. I actually bought a sample set from them really early on. Like when I first got into perfumes, Hermetico is a brand that kind of spoke to me um, and they really think of themselves as like kind of alchemists, like perfume alchemists, which I just connect with that idea so much. I believe all of their stuff also doesn't use um, alcohol either, I believe so. But anyway, as for Peony Pop, I was excited to try something, you know, even the name Peony Pop maybe isn't what I would pick out to maybe try. So I was excited to see what it smelled like. I had like these ideas in my head and Honestly, if I'm I think it smells like what I expected. This is like a floral fragrance I get something kind of bright, but there's definitely this underlying kind of rose scent to it as well Maybe something like lightly citrusy uh, But I think what's kind of interesting about this one is that it doesn't have a sweetness to it I feel like um, maybe this could be similar to like something from Dolce & Gabbana or something like that um, I'm thinking there's like the rose ones. I don't know why in my head it seems similar, but this one I feel like is like maybe more refined, not as sweet, or maybe a little bit more balanced. And I also get this almost um, kind of burnt note in here. I don't know why my nose picks that up, but there's something in the like last bit of my smell that almost smells burnt. So there's this part of me because of the rose, I think that gives me like Renaissance vibes that gives me like Catholic church incense. I don't know, that just, that's maybe my childhood, but there's something about it that comes off almost incensey to me because of that slightly um, kind of almost savory yet burnt note and the fact that it's not super sweet. Um, and I actually really like that about it. I find it interesting and a little bit more unique than how this could go. And I really like too that it's not sickeningly sweet or too fruity. It's nice. I am definitely excited to get some wear out of this, test it out a little bit more, but definitely an interesting one to maybe smell if you're interested in like florals. I am not the biggest floral person. I'm dipping my toe in, especially as spring happens and summer happens, um, but it's definitely one that I want to give a chance and give a try. So I will leave my code for Twisted Lily. If you guys don't know, I'm a Twisted Lily affiliate down below. It will save you some money if you decide to shop on there. And what I love too is they do tons of sampling as well. So I highly suggest, especially for some of these niche, more expensive perfumes to sample them, make sure there's something that you like. And I love that they offer samples, I believe on all the perfumes that they do. And I feel like they're pretty reasonable as well. So yeah, thank you so much to Twisted Lily for sending this out. I am excited. and I think it's a, a good one for me to test out for spring and summer, obviously, because it's a floral. I realized right now, like I just went off, no notes. Let's talk about notes, like, right? <laughs> so in the top notes, we have Osmanthus, Black Currant, Bulgarian, and rose, bergamot, grapefruit, and violet leaf. In the mid notes, there's peony, raspberry, jasmine, geranium, kind of surprised by that one, lily of the valley, and iris, and then the base is full of shit too. There's musk, vetiver, plum, sandalwood, cedar, amber, myrrh, and moss. Um, I feel like some of that myrrh maybe is giving me that incense. I definitely could smell the citruses in here, um, and the black currant I feel like is a little tamed down. Like, it definitely has a fruity quality to it, but it's not so tangy, and I find things like cur black currant, sometimes raspberry which is in the mids those things can um, come off a little sharp I guess to me as fruits and um, I really like that it's a little bit more mellow and a little bit more balanced in here I like that it it contrasts or kind of add something other than all the florals but it's not too sweet and not too tangy and then I really feel like too that amber the myrrh even the moss in the base really helps to kind of give it something like 
a little more umph than just like girly, you know what I mean? So um, yeah, interesting, lots of notes in that one. I'm surprised it has geranium in it. I tend to not like geranium, I'm noticing, um, but I don't feel like it stands out in some way that I don't like in that perfume. Anyway, I will try to talk about notes, but it's kind of interesting to see what I thought of the, the perfume without the notes first, you know? But next, we're gonna talk about a new release. This is from Ellis Brooklyn, it is called Sunfruit. I was so intrigued by this because of the fact that it had fig. They were promoing this and talking about how it has fig, it has coconut, it's this perfect summery fragrance, and I'm a sucker for fig. I am a sucker for fig and coconut, and so I, of course, wanted to try this. I am definitely pretty invested, I feel like, in Ellis Brooklyn as a brand. I have another one to talk about after this, but I've tried, I think, all the fragrances that they have. I have quite a few bottles. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's just one that, it's a house that I keep up on, I would say. So um, this is what it looks like. It's a beautiful, like, chartreuse glass bottle that's uh, like frosted. I ordered this off their website. I didn't even wait for it to get to Sephora or at other stores because I was like, I want it now. Um, I know I'm talking about it a little bit later, but that was not the intention. Um, that was because of surgery. And I have to say, this is growing on me. My initial thoughts on this, I was not, I was not happy. I'm not gonna lie. I expected, okay, the idea that I had of this was something that was going to be fig and coconut. Obviously love that, love that for us. And I thought it would be like warm and sensual and something for summer, but based on all the other notes that they were kind of saying, I I didn't expect it to be so fruity. Like this smells so kind of like tropical fruity. Um, there's almost this like, there's this like creamy coconut note that I really like underneath, but on top of that is like a sweet tart. Like it smells like a sweet tart to me. Um, and so I just wasn't expecting that tartness. I was wanting something like warm and sensual and like, I don't know, I just, I had this whole idea obviously in my head of what I thought it was gonna be. So that probably didn't help, um, but I've been, you know, testing it a lot more. I do like it. I'm starting, you know, it's growing on me like I said. I think it's a good one for summer. It's definitely fruity. It gives me tropical vacation vibes. I just thought it was gonna be maybe a little bit different and I feel like this is a little bit more, I guess what I would expect from like a tropical summer fragrance. And I really wish the fig was just there a little bit more. I mean, I can smell it, don't get me wrong, but I really love like a prominent fig note and I really thought that's what I was gonna get. So yeah, there's that. I'll, I'll read you the notes on it. That way I can kind of tell you what I feel like actually pops out in the smell that I'm smelling. The top notes on this are fig, pear, bergamot, and plum tree. The mid notes are jasmine, orange blossom, iris, and cyclamen. And then the base notes, coconut, musk, vanilla orchid, and amber. I think that sweetheart note is definitely coming from that pear. I just feel like the pear overtakes the fig in the top. And so it's not like it's not there at all. I just, I want, I want the pear out. You know what I mean? I just, just, just make it figgy, baby. But I do like the way that it dries down. I do find that kind of muskiness kind of sticks with you. It's a little bit lighter. I don't feel like I get a ton of wear time on this. Um, it doesn't stick around forever, which I kind of like because the type of scent that it is, it's like, let's enjoy it for the moment, but like when it's nighttime and we're gonna go out and do something different, maybe I'm not wearing this. You know what I mean? I think the the four, the four hours, four to six maybe hours that I could get from this um, is perfect of what I would want from this this scent, you know? So yeah, I think that if you're into something like that sweet tart note sounds interesting and you like all the other notes, you want something that's kind of tropical and lightweight and still kind of bright and fun. Um, it's sweet without being too sweet. There is something about it when I initially smelled it that reminds me of Ariana Grande, um, Thank You Next which that one's not my favorite, but I feel like the kind of combination of something tart and creamy is done better in this that doesn't like make my nose go through hoops or something. It's growing on me. It might become something I really enjoy come like the end of summer. I am gonna try to get a lot of use out of it this summer. I think it will be a nice one. It does remind me of a vacation. Like this is the perfume that you would have on vacation, I feel like, or you know, you're it's like a beach vacation. Like you are, in bathing suits, your skin is showing, sweat down your, like, you know what I mean? But it's daytime, it's not a sexy nighttime one. I definitely get the vibe, I get it. I just had different thoughts initially. And something that I've been testing this out with as well is just mixing it with other fig perfumes that I have. Let me show you what I've been mixing it with. The first one I've been testing it with is the Sweet Vanilla Fig from Philosophy. And I feel like this kind of plays up the creamier aspect, the vanilla that's in there and kind of tones down more of that tartness. I think this might be my favorite way to wear it when I'm, you know, layering it. And I, I kind of do prefer layering it 
I think so far, um, but I really like this one with it. I think it's nice and it just brings out more of the vanilla, more of the actual fig. And then the other one is Philosicos from Diptyque. And I feel like this gives it that woody, fresh, like green fig note a little bit more. And this doesn't have any sweetness or anything like that. So I feel like the sweetness I do get from the Ellis Brooklyn one um, tends to pair well too. It kind of tones down what's sweet and tart and kind of, you know, fun in this with something that's more my style, like woody and fresh. So I, I've been liking this combination as well. This still keeps it bright though. You know, I feel like this still keeps it light and airy and this one adds something a little bit more creamy. So yeah, I've been enjoying layering definitely with that one. The other Ellis Brooklyn scent that I picked up recently was a Prey. I actually got this on a great deal on Mercari and this was not like a blind buy. I knew I wanted this. I'd initially, when this came out, I believe this was like the end of last year in the winter time, but I bought the travel spray and I actually really enjoyed the scent of this one. This and uh, Sci-Fi are my two favorite scents from Ellis Brooklyn, um, probably by far. Yeah, I, I'm still on the fence about Super Amber, but I knew from the tester spray that I would wanna add a bottle of this. I love the bottle, it's so beautiful. It's kind of sad because I do think this works best for the colder months, so I'm probably not gonna get a ton of wear out of it, but Sam also enjoys this scent too. I think this is a really nice like unisex scent. Mmm, oh, this just gives me like, immediately there's a cooling sensation when you smell this. It smells like the forest and snow and wood and uh, a cabin almost it just places you there like it places you exactly there there's something about it that's like holiday as well and I love that like you know Christmas holiday mmm it's a ski trip man I, I really really love this I think that they did a great job with this perfume this reminds me like something in the vein I like to try to do that if there's something that reminds me of a perfume but this kind of is Cape Heartache from imaginary authors but I feel like there's not a strawberry note in it so it doesn't have that sweeter fruit note but there's still something about about this um, that gives it like it's like the forest with the pine needles are green though like they're a deep green there's life in this forest um, it's not like dry and dead so the notes on this top notes juniper berries cardamom and saffron I do pick up some of that I think it's the juniper because sometimes that smells almost like on the edge of like medicinal Vicks rub to me like those are some of the vibes I get from juniper berries then in the mid notes we have bourbon whiskey guyac wood suede violet labdanum and praline and then we have cedar sandalwood vanilla patchouli and musk in the base I feel like the patchouli in this is just nice it just adds a rich it's not too overpowering, which I love. I can get some of that whiskey even like now reading the notes I don't think I've ever fully read the notes on this one. I just smelled it I just knew I wanted to try it bought the travel spray knew I liked it type thing, you know um, But the whiskey in there I think also adds something rich and um, Slightly sweet obviously there's praline in it too. So that is there but I definitely get something woody I feel like that's like the top thing I get wood that's sprouting something green and amazing in the cold months. Like you can smell the coolness from this and I love that. So super happy to add this to my collection. Um, I knew it was gonna make it in there. I just didn't know when. So glad on this one, really, really love it. Mm, 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 that's good. Next, let's talk about another newer release. This is from, I believe the brand's Caturel and this is Yes I Am Delicious. The reason this got me is because, well one, the bottle is cute, it's, it's cute, okay? It's like a frosted, glass kind of um, cushioned look on the bottom and it looks like a lipstick like it's cute it's so cute I know they have other perfumes like this I've seen them in other people's videos and whatnot but the kind of main accords and notes on this are what had me really excited so this has cacao pod hazelnut green mandarin and cardamom in the top orange blossom orange Indian jasmine in the mid notes and then dark chocolate and sandalwood in the base I was really really excited for the chocolate notes like I really love Chocolate Greedy from Montal and I've really been trying to find like those chocolate fragrances to me that um, I love. I don't know, it's like a fun thing to kind of explore because I wasn't always into gourmands and finding chocolate fragrances I actually do love is it has like open doors that I'm like, mm, what other ones are out there? So um, it's cute, you spray, like it's cute, okay? <laughs> the bottle's so cute. You definitely smell the, the chocolate in here, but I thought this would be a little bit richer and deeper, but I feel like there's a lot of that orange fruit coming through, like a lot of it. So this smells like kind of like a Tootsie Roll, like it's that type of a chocolate scent, um, which I feel like is a very unique 
type of chocolate scent. I had Sam smell this too. And like this also to me gives me memories of just like your Halloween candy bowl, like the entire bowl. You know how if you put that in a cabinet or whatever, like it will just, it just smells sweet. And there's chocolate mixed with like runs and mixed with like, you know, all the different types of things. It just smells like the concoction that is the Halloween. <laughs> candy bowl. I don't know, like that's exactly what it smells like to me. Like it's getting to the end, you have a few pieces of chocolate, everything's kind of mixed together. So it's definitely interesting. I love this for the bottle. I don't regret buying this. Like when I think of how I want to buy perfume and, and what I think is fun and interesting to add to my collection, it's definitely not a regret, but I don't know how much I'll, I'll truly wear this one, but it'll be interesting because their chocolate is there. I just want to add this with something maybe a little bit richer. Like I think this might be a fun one to add to something like by the fireplace or something woodier or smokier, even like a, a vanilla or something like that, you know, to kind of tame down the, the orange side, the kind of hard candy side of this. I really wanted like only chocolate rich, you know what I mean? I'd love to know if you pick this up, do you get the Halloween like candy bowl vibes or what? Oh, it's just like, that is what it is. It is like a Tootsie Roll, like opening the waxed, like um, wrapping of a Tootsie Roll and smelling it and eating it. And you're like, it's chocolate, but there's some, like, it's like, it's not normal chocolate. It's its own thing. It's its own category. That's this. That's what this is. Okay, I have another chocolate fragrance as well. This one was another one that was on my list. I've smelled it before. I knew I wanted to get it. This is Pinrose's Gilded Fox. This is like the older packaging, I believe. Mm, but this, I feel like is just, it's that chocolate note, but it has more of that spice to it. It has more of that wood to it. And I think you know, maybe I was expecting something a little bit more like this in the Catcherelle I Am Delicious one. This is definitely a bit more my style. I definitely smell um, some of that spicy note. I'm not sure if there's cardamom in it, but that's what it kind of reminds me of. Yeah, cacao, cardamom in the top, rum and butter in the mid, and then amber, vetiver, and cedar in the base. I feel like you can smell like all that. Like that's just like, yeah, that all makes <laughs> That all makes sense. The butter adds something kind of creamy almost to this. I really do smell that cardamom. Like I said, it adds something kind of spicy to this. Definitely cacao, like you smell the cacao. The rum too, I can smell that kind of sweetness of the rum. And then I love that the base has something a little bit woodier as well. So um, I really like this. There's almost like this uh, cologne undertone to this that I, I like. Um, and it's definitely one I'm so excited to have in my collection, excited to wear going into fall once that gets here. I know I'm talking about a lot of like things that I feel like are pretty appropriate for fall, but I'm learning that a lot of my preferences work, work really well for <laughs> for, for uh, colder months, but yeah, that's Gilded Fox. So excited to have that in my collection. I think it's a really nice chocolate scent and uh, I feel like it's, it's hard to come by those good chocolate scents to me anyway. Two kind of social media-esque inspired purchases in that I've seen these brands on Instagram and so that's kind of how they've come into my knowledge. Um, so I'll start with Sniff. I actually purchased some stuff from Sniff back like Last year, almost a year ago at this point, I bought three of the perfumes that they had. I think it was the only three they had at the time. And they do this kind of weird marketing. I don't really love their style. I think initially they were trying to be like, we don't need to talk about like notes because you know, we'll just describe the feeling of it. Like, ew, I don't really love that. It's like, just give us the damn notes. I think they've changed that because there's notes on the website now, but they also do a thing where, you know, they don't do samples. So you have to buy it. And then their whole thing is like, but it's easy to return. Um, and I just don't love that up front. It's like, you know, they're kind of like hoping you don't return it, you know, like that's kind of the hope. But anyway, they came out with a new perfume. They've had quite a few different launches and collaborations, I feel like over the past year. Um, and this is called Strawberry Moon. It's their newest one. I believe it's in collab with like a, a hotel or something. I thought the notes on this sounded intriguing and I'm not gonna lie, the name Strawberry Moon, the packaging, I'll show some pictures of what the like marketing was. I definitely think they like, they have their marketing on, on point, okay? It, it makes you wanna buy, it really does. Okay, so it says on the website, this South Beach scent is inspired by the Good Time Hotel's Retro Swim Club. With jasmine, bright citrus, and suntan leather, this limited edition fragrance brings the lively Miami social scene to you. Bottled to last from sunrise to sunset, it's good times, blah, 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 under the strawberry moon. Okay, again, so cute, really like the packaging. The way that this came though, um, I still have 
like plastic on this bottle and I don't know what's up with that. Like it was impossible to like get out of the packaging and even now I still have like little pieces of plastic. So I was really disappointed with that. Didn't experience that with my last ones that I um, bought, which I ended up returning those because I did not think the scents were that good. And I think this is okay. Like I definitely get the leather note and I like leather. So um, that was like an intriguing and exciting note to me. There's something kind of powdery though about this. It feels kind of Dated, like maybe this is kind of retro. I think it's a nice unisex scent. They tend to do mostly unisex scents like, you know, um, and I, I like that. That's what attracted me to the brand. I just don't think this is the right one for me, honestly. Yeah, it's forgettable at best. And to me at worst, I don't like it, you know? There's something about it that sm smells kind of like you're hugging an old dude who's kind of stale. Like I don't, not my thing. Something a little spicy coming through. Definitely again, that leather, which I like a leather note, but the other notes playing with this, maybe it's the jasmine, I don't know, maybe too floral. It's not really it for me, so kind of disappointing. I mean, it sold out super fast. I would always wanna know what this smells like. I know myself, I know myself, and I know there's no other way to really smell it, so I'm not upset. I just wish the packaging was better, um, you know, having it. Yeah, it's a weird one. I don't know, <laughs> not a fan. The other one, though, this is from Brown Girl Jane, um, and this is Casablanca. They have three perfumes. I believe this is a black-owned perfume brand, and I was really excited and intrigued by the notes in Casablanca, and this one, I, it, it's so interesting. I feel like this is quite a unique fragrance, at least to me. This also has a leather note, so I was like excited for that, but this one has something sweet and kind of marshmallowy, but still kind of powdery, but then there's the leather. And so it's just like a lot for my nose to take in, and there's something about it that I really do enjoy. Here are the notes on this. The top notes, marshmallow, cardamom, incense. Like already intrigued as fuck. Then the middle notes, vanilla orchid, suede, and saffron, base notes, sandalwood, amber, musk, and there's just something about this I really like. I feel like the suede in here, um, it's definitely a suede leather, and I feel like sometimes suede can come across a little medical, like medical band-aids. I like that. There is something kind of med medical about this. The same kind of medical note you might get from Baccarat Rouge, the same kind of medical note you might get from Cloud. I feel like that's mixed in here, and I love that. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I love that, which it has the saffron, it has the marshmallow. There's something about this um, that feels like a slightly maybe more interesting cloud from Ariana Grande to me. Like, you know, just something a little more intriguing, maybe a little bit more grown up than that. And I like it, I like it. Um, it's one that like, I, I just wanna constantly go back and smell because I'm just like, what is that? And and I I do think that I like it, but like, I'm also questioning like, hmm, how much do I like it? Like, what do I like? It's just so interesting. So this is one, I definitely think if you were thinking this might be good for you, I don't know if they do sample stuff on their site, but I think the packaging's cute. It's quite small, um, but these are like 65 bucks, I believe. So it's not like outrageous in terms of perfume. I know that's not like cheap, but you know, in terms of the perfume world, $65 for a bottle isn't the worst. So um, that one was a pleasant surprise. Glad that I liked it. And you know, um, I, I really liked that it was something interesting and something I've never smelt quite before. Even if it reminds me of things, it still is kind of its own thing. Okay, next let's talk about one that I was gifted from Commodity. I'm actually an affiliate with Commodity as well, so I'll leave my code down below if you wanna shop from them. Commodity recently rebranded, so what they do is what I like in perfume. So um, their whole house is just one. I enjoy basically everything I've ever smelled from them. I do have a video coming on the sampler side. I bought that before I was an affiliate a while ago, um, and it was so much fun. I smelled it. I feel like they do a really good job with their sampler that also because it's very like interactive and I feel like a good one, if you wanted to do it with a group of people, they definitely set it up where it's that kind of experience and I really appreciate that because I love a little uh, perfume smelling party. Like <laughs> I'm telling you, I make my friends smell way too many perfumes. And so my favorite one from the sampler, spoiler for that video to come, um, was the milk in the personal space. So that's something that they do as well where um, they have like the personal, the kind of medium, and then the bold, um, depending on what you want out of the strength of your perfume. And I think that's definitely something interesting and unique from them. But I went with milk in the personal and this is a sweet lactonic, 
organic um, kind of woody scent. Mmm, I just, there's something about this one that just I kept going back to when it was the whole set. I had done it with Sam and our friend Liam. This was the one that I kept going back to, but there are so many amazing scents that they have. I think paper is a really great book. They have like this um, kind of one word concept stuff, which I really like that as well. Um, kind of these abstract ways to get across velvet and gold and wool and you know, all these, things in a to a perfume. I just, I love that as well. And I feel like their house does a great job of layering. Like that's what I intend to do with this with other perfumes outside of commodities brand, because this is so sweet and um, yeah, creamy. There's almost something kind of almondy, but not too cherry almond. Cause I have always my whole life, every time everyone's like, oh, it's almond. I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's cherry. I've always thought that my whole life. So the notes on here, marshmallow and milk in the top. Hey baby, I love that. Okay, then we have musk and white cedar extract in the mid notes and then woodsy notes and amber in the base. I feel like a lot of um, commodities fragrances to me, I don't wanna say they're simple, but I find them to be, I guess simple, yeah. I just don't think simple has to be negative. I just, I find them to be really nice. I feel like they're in the vein if you like Jo Malone, if you like Atelier Cologne, but this has better lasting power because you can go to that bold experience if you want. But I'm just saying, the, the same kind of ways that you can layer those fragrances, I feel like. I think you would like that about this fragrance house because you can get something that is a little bit more low key. I also though love that they really focus on unisex fragrances. I love that. Nothing is overly like girly or masculine to me. All the scents are just good and um, yeah. This is a fragrance house I've really enjoyed. I'm excited to definitely get more. I'm excited to use this with my other perfumes. I think that it will pair really great. I've already done it with paper. Um, they do some molecule type scents. I just, I really love the house. I'm excited to have my first one and grateful. And again, I do have a code. So if you wanna shop, even try out the sampler set, which again, it's, it's all their perfumes, I believe in that sampler set. Um, I think it's a great house. I'm, I was really happy with that one. It was one of those ones where when we're smelling them, we're like, man, all of these are good. Or I could see someone wearing all of these. Um, and I'm telling you, I've done some samplers where I'm like, what is this? I like one, maybe. I'm not even sure about that. Mmm, so, so good. I love that. It's so sweet and milky and woody. And I think it's just a great one to layer, especially for things that I tend to go toward. Mm, just a nice little like added on like a dollop of whipped cream, you know, on your perfume. I have two more perfumes to talk about. Um, next, let's talk about this little guy, okay? I picked this up. It's the Vanille Eau de Toilette from Outremer. I don't know, Outremer, it's, I think it's Frenchy, okay? And I'm not very good at that, but this is a tiny bottle. The normal bottle is definitely bigger than this, but I picked this up from Anthropology. I was getting a jumpsuit and I was like, you know what? I've heard really great things about this vanilla. It's pretty inexpensive, so I wanna give it a try. And it's not my type of vanilla. I understand why people like it. I understand why people like it, but it is not the vanilla I like. I like a richer vanilla, something that maybe smells a little bit more foody, something that smells like, has some cream to it, has some coffee to it, even has some wood to it, something like that. This smells like a sugary vanilla, like a, a sweet, um, you know, we know there's candies, right? You can do a chocolate or you can do like, of Mike and Ike. This, if vanilla were somehow, I don't even know if this scale makes sense to you, but it's not a vanilla chocolate type of scent. Like obviously there's no chocolate in it. I'm just saying it's more like if vanilla were a Mike and Ike, okay? Which it's not even like tart like that. I'm just saying it's more like a candy than it is a chocolate. Does that even make sense? Anyway, um, this also smells like plastic doll heads. This smells like when you buy a Barbie or something and like one of the selling features is that their clothes smell like vanilla. That's what this smells like. Like it smells like a Cabbage Patch Kid clothes that are meant to smell like vanilla. That's what this smells like. It has something reminiscent to me of like sometimes the Montal vanillas that just go sweet, sweet, sweet. I get it. I get why people like it. It's not a vanilla I wanna wear on its own. I think like I love dark vanilla. You guys, probably my top three fragrances that I own, dark vanilla from Montal. It's literally amazing um, and <laughs> It's sexy and it has this very sweet vanilla note, but it's like totally balanced out to me with this oud and this leather and something kind of smoky. And like, so all of that to me balances it out. This is like just the vanilla sweet note mixed with a little bit of plastic or something. There's something just really quite artificial to me about it, but not like foodie, like artificial food. It's just 
yeah, it's just not my type of vanilla, but I know a lot of people like it and it might be your type of vanilla and you might not like the vanillas that I like. So I'm glad that I tried it out. Super glad I bought the small bottle, thank goodness. I think it could be one that maybe, again, you layer, but it's just, woo. Like, I just feel like my blood sugar went up from smelling it. It's sweet, that's how it, it reads on my nose. It's just like, damn, that's sweet. <laughs> Last one I picked up, another Mercari purchase. This one is Lumiere Blanche from Olfactive Studio. I mean, I love this bottle. The liquid in here is kind of this, um, ah, I don't know, semi-opaque. It almost looks like bioluminescence or something. It's really beautiful. I picked this up because I was watching a video I cannot remember the person, but she sold me on it, obviously. This is one of her favorite perfumes and she described it as like tonic and woody. And again, that's just something that I'm very interested to try. I have a lot of perfumes that I really, really love that have that kind of milky sandalwood, Thing going on like literally milk and wood and I just am obsessed with it I plan on doing a video on the ones that I have in my collection and describing them in case that's something you're interested in I feel like it's a little niche in the type of scent that it is so I feel like I've collected a few um, anyway let me know if you'd want to see that this has notes of cardamom star anise and cinnamon in the top there's almond cashmere wood and iris in the mid notes and then in the base sandalwood musk cedar and tonka I really like the way that this smells on the tester strip, in the air, and even on Sam. But I find on me, this turns into very, like it turns pretty licorice pretty fast. Um, something like like licorice or something something like that. I don't know and then it gets this weird kind of syrupy note And I don't know where the fuck that's even coming from but something about it um, I don't really love it on my skin. It's a light scent It's not sweet really at all, but again on my skin then it turns it's a specific type of syrupiness I don't know how to explain it smells almost like a syrup that's gone off or something. I don't know, it just doesn't work on my skin. I'm so sad about it. I really wanted to like this and even smelling it, it seems like something I would like because it is quite unisex, um, but I don't get something overly creamy at all from this actually. It's just interesting. It's a very interesting one. I don't even know how to explain it. I don't feel like I'm doing it well, um, but definitely those spices in the top, whatever that is, comes across kind of licorice-y or something that's reading licorice to me um, in not a good way. And then it also, um, you know, something about maybe the way the wood is in here because there is something kind of dry smelling in this perfume, almost kind of to my nose dusty. Um, and so then mixed with the licorice in my skin and my own chemistry, it just turns this kind of rancid syrup note Odd. I know that's odd to say. So this one, unfortunately, not my favorite. Um, we'll see. I'm still testing it. I, I don't want it to be true, but I had another perfume from Caudalie actually do this on me as well. It's that same kind of syrupiness. I just don't, it's like a very specific thing to me. Anyway, I don't love it. Um, I want to love it more. I feel like it has promise and I think on someone it could definitely smell really great, but it unfortunately didn't work for me, but I love the bottle and I actually really want to try more from Olfactive Studio because I just feel like when I was looking at all the different perfumes that they have, they seem to be something I would enjoy. Lots of woody stuff, um, lots of like unisex stuff. So definitely a brand I want to explore more, but that's everything I picked up recently. It's a lot of stuff. Some of it was sent to me like the commodity and the peony pop But um, yeah, I'd love to know if you tried any of these if any of these sound interesting to you And also what you've picked up recently. I feel like there are so many new releases There's a new Juliet has a gun that I really want to smell the new Donna born in Roma coral fantasy or something I really want to smell that one um, There's just been a lot. There's been a lot of new perfumes. So I don't know I just didn't realize I don't know if it's a new thing because I know perfume is you know more popular now Maybe than it's been maybe Maybe that's true. So I don't know if all these new releases are because of that or just they always were like this, but I didn't give a shit. So I didn't realize, I don't know. Um, but yeah, lots of stuff out there. Let me know if there's something you think I would like that's new, um, if, especially if you tried some of the new stuff. So thanks so much for being here, guys. I love you. I love being here on Sunday and I'm so excited to be back and doing these videos. So lots of them to come. Thank you so much. And other than that, I'll see you in the next one. Bye guys.